In this video, I'm going to teach you how to write the perfect six mark answers. We're going to do it in for physics, but it also applies to biology and chemistry as well. So there's going to be some tips I'm going to explain as an AQA examiner for A-level and for GCSE. Um, things that I look for when I'm marking six mark answers that makes it easy for me and I can tell the student knows what they're talking about. So a couple of tips really, um, I always tell this to all my students, but make sure you read the question twice, especially with six mark questions. You want to start writing until you know exactly what the question is asking you. Then I would make a brief plan. So it doesn't have to be long, not like as long as in history or in English or something like that, but just 20 seconds. What am I going to include? What are some key points I need to remember? Write them down because when you're in the middle of your answer, you might forget them. And I would 100% use bullet points. As AQA have stated in a couple of times and other exam boards have as well, it is absolutely fine to use bullet points or to use tables as long as it's written in a way that, you know, it's not just two words for each thing. It's clear what you're talking about um, for each bullet point. Um, but the idea is it makes it a lot easier to mark for the examiners and it it makes it easier for you to write. So rather than just writing stuff as a paragraph, um, write it in bullet points. It reduces waffle, um, you're saying the same thing over and over again, and makes it a lot easier to mark. So let's have a look at some examples of where you might do this and what difference it might make to your answers. So we're going to start off with a required practical question about insulation. So I've got the question here. We're not looking so much at the content here, but the exam technique in how people write their answers. I'm going to show you three answers for the six mark method question. And we're going to look at what kind of things they include. Do they use bullet points? How easy is it to mark? Um, and are they hitting the correct points on the mark scheme? So the first answer is this one here. Now hopefully we can tell straight away that actually it's more like marking an essay for the examiner. This isn't a step-by-step -step method. It's not something you could give to someone in like year seven or eight and they could read and follow the instructions. It has a couple of instructions on what to do. They talk about gathering your equipment together from the diagram. You don't need to mention that because it's just wasted space. It's already in the question. They talk about measuring the temperature of the water. They don't say how. Um, they talk about waiting some time. Again, they don't say how much time to wait and how to measure it. Um, and again, they talk about measuring results and putting them in a table and in a graph. You don't need to mention those. It's not wrong, but you don't need to mention a table. Um, the graph is already there for you um, and while repeats are always useful um, you haven't really said what you're repeating so actually this method would be zero marks if we look at the mark scheme um, there's lots of things we could hit here um, which we haven't really talked about any of them and as you might see from the mark scheme even though it's a six mark answer it is in bullet points or step by step so that's how you should be planning your own the next method we've got is a little bit better. It looks like a little bit brief, but actually we've got bullet points and we've got some specific different details. So in this method, we've got someone measuring the initial temperature, um, really specific, and they mentioned the use of the thermometer. That sounds sensible. Then we've got measure a specific amount of time. They say start a stopwatch, but they don't say how long to wait. Um, and then they talk about calculating a temperature decrease and then repeating with the same volume of water. Um, and they haven't said how to do that, though. So actually, if we look at the um, mark scheme here, they've mentioned some equipment. Uh, they've got some of the marks here. They haven't been specific enough with certain areas. Like they haven't said how to get the hot water hot. They haven't said how to find, uh, how to measure the exact volume of it to keep it the same. They haven't spoken about the time um, to wait. And if you look at the question on the graph on the y-axis, it specifically says temperature decrease after five minutes. So you need to have specific numbers and units in your answer. So for this one, um, I'm probably going to give it potentially around a three. Um, if you look at the layers for this uh, question, um, it's either going to be a two or a three. They have mentioned using different newspapers, which is mentioned in the graph, but they haven't been specific enough um, with their equipment and what they're measuring and when. The last method I've got to show you, and um, we're going to read through, just look at it automatically. Even though it's not one, two, three, four, five, six steps, um, it's done in bullet points, but we can hopefully see there are numbers in this, which is always a good sign that we're measuring in a specific way. So they've started off, they said we're going to wrap zero layers of newspaper around the can. And if we look at the last point, it then talks about measure repeating, doing this experiment with 8, 16, 24, 32. So this person's been really clever and looked at the graph and looked at where the points are and said, well, actually, it tells me exactly how many newspaper layers I need to wrap. So so I'm going to mention those in my answer rather than just saying add more newspaper. They've also talked about using a kettle to heat the water and measuring cylinder to measure the volume of water to put it in the can, um, a stopwatch to, to um, measure the five minutes, measuring the temperature again, calculating the decrease. And they've also at the end talked about the repeats have to be at the same volume using the measuring cylinder and also the same initial temperature. And you'll notice how they haven't taken up all the room. Depends on the size of your handwriting. It is very easy to get six marks without even taking up all the room if you have quite small handwriting. Um, but if you do it in bullet points, as I mentioned, you are much less likely to waffle and repeat yourself uh, and to have separate steps that can be easily marked. So this would be an example of a perfect six mark answer in my view. 
This next question we're going to have a look at is on a physics paper. Um, however, it's nothing on the specification. It's just graph analysis. So it could be on a biology paper, or you could find something a little bit different on a chemistry paper. So we've got a graph here, and we can see you've got the muscle power um, of males and females and how it varies over, the, yeah, over time and over their different ages. And the question says to compare the muscle power of males with the muscle power of females. So in our answer, I'm going to show you a good one and a bad one. We're going to do the bad one first. Um, I'm going to show you a couple of reasons why it's bad, a couple of pointers to look out for. And again, using bullet points, making sure you're not repeating yourself is really important. So this is the first one, uh, first answer we're going to look at. So the question says, um, compare the muscle power. And the person says, both lines go up at the start and come back down. A male one goes higher than a female one, even though it starts lower. And it shows that men are stronger than women. Now, First of all, they haven't used bullet points. Second of all, they haven't mentioned muscle power once. If the question asks for muscle power, you have to mention that in your answer because that's what the graph is comparing. He's not saying um, that men are stronger than women. If you have a look at the mark scheme, it actually specifically says ignore comments related to strength. It just talks about muscle power. Now, usually those mean the same thing, but the graph doesn't tell us that. The person talks about the graph or the line going up and coming back down. You cannot say the line or the graph. You've got to say what the line is representing. So I'll have a look at a really good answer now that does that and does it actually in <clears throat> only four bullet points. So for this answer, um, we can already see it's easier to mark. We've got numbers in the answer, which is always a good sign, and we've got bullet points. So the first conclusion to make, and there's no explanations needed here, it's just comparing from the graph. The first bullet point to make um, is that males have a greater muscle power than females, um, but that only applies above 10 years old. So for most of the graph, the solid line is higher than the dashed line, apart from that first section between ages of about 5 and 10. Conversely to that, we could say females have greater muscle power below 10 years old. Sounds like a very really obvious point, but you get marks for obvious points in questions like this where you're just describing a graph. We could then talk about the peak of the graph and say males have their highest muscle power at 47 um, watts per kilogram, age 24 years old. Don't worry about what those units mean, it's just on the graph, and we're just reading the graph across to find out what the, when the peak age is. And conversely, we could say females have their highest muscle power at 37, and they're age 20 years old. Now, there are other things you could say for this question, but that's absolutely enough for four out of four marks. There's a valid comparison. They've been really specific um, when describing the graph. We could talk about the rate of increase and the rate of decrease, um, but that's basically bare minimum four marks. And again, they haven't used all the spaces. They haven't waffled. They've done four bullet points because there's four marks um, just to make sure they're not repeating themselves and to make sure they get all the marks available. So there we go. I hope that's helpful. That's only a couple of examples of how to improve your exam technique in specifically longer answer questions, not just six markers, um, but anything that's sort of three, four markers is absolutely fine to use bullet points. If you like a walkthrough from the physics required practicals, um, I'll leave a link to the video at the end here. Um, so I've done one for each of the required practicals, paper one and paper two, um, just to show you how to answer those kind of tricky method type questions and how to keep an eye on different things in the question that could change that would make your answer a bit different. So I hope you enjoyed it and please leave a like. Um, and subscribe if you haven't done so already.